Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We are excited to have over 240 registered attendees for today's webinar, which is eligible for one credit from the ACI. Let's get started by giving one lucky attendee a Webinar Wednesday lunch bag for answering this trivia question. Sonitor, our sponsor today, is headquartered in Connecticut. What is the name of the river that flows through Connecticut? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard. While you're answering, I want to invite everyone to join us for our full MD Expo conference, which will bring HTM professionals from across the nation to Seattle from October 5th to 7th for three days of learning, networking, and the latest advances in technology, products, and services. Registration is now open, and details can be found at mdexposhow.com forward slash Seattle. Okay, and let's see who the winner of our webinar Wednesday lunch bag is. And it is uh, Cheryl Shaw. Well done, Cheryl. Congratulations. The correct answer is the Connecticut River. Webinar Wednesday, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Sonitor. Sonitor is the leading provider of unique ultrasound-based real-time location system solutions, linking the physical world with the Internet of Things to provide real-time visibility and connected intelligence. As the first and only company to use proprietary ultrasound technology as the primary technology for indoor positioning systems, Sonitor's platform automatically tracks the real-time location of movable equipment and people with 100% room or subroom level accuracy in complex indoor environments such as hospitals, clinics, and ambulatory surgery centers. With an open integration platform, Sonitor provides the flexibility to leverage best-in-class software application solutions, covering many uses such as nurse call, patient flow, workflow, and capacity management, hand hygiene, and infection control, and asset and inventory management. For more information, please visit sonitor.com. Our presenters today are Kelly Jones, RN and Clinical Formats Officer from Stanford Hospital in Stanford, Connecticut, and Jill Wilson, MBA, BS, Administrative Director of Orthopedics, Sports Medicine, and Regional Operations at Altru Health System. Kelly, you may begin whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, a little bit about Stanford Hospital. We're a 305-bed magnet not-for-profit teaching hospital in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Um, we also we serve the surrounding areas, including Westchester County, New York. Um, our areas of expertise include cancer care, heart services, and orthopedics. We also have the only pediatric ED in the uh, Fairfield County. We also have a collaborative relationship with Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and the Hospital for Special Surgery. Um, on average, we have about 15,000 discharges a year. So in 2015, the health system started their new vision of Healing Reimagined. Also around this time, the state of Connecticut increased their uh, tax on hospitals in the state, resulting in a tremendous increase in taxes that each hospital had to pay. Um, but despite the financial challenges, we wanted to continue on our journey to create this new state-of-the-art healing environment. Um, part of this was building a brand new patient tower with a new ED, OR, and cath lab suite which more than doubled the footprint of each patient care area as well as the campus itself. Uh, the, the decision was clear that we needed to have greater visibility at that time, uh, at the time of all of our assets, patients, and staff. Um, and deployment of the upgrade, deployment and upgrade of our Sonitor Sense RTLS was a high priority. It was a key point in our strategic plan to use um, innovative technology to help reduce costs and increase ROI. So, um, we, we decided on our uh, Sonator RTLS-enabled features um, to increase our operational efficiencies. It gave us a, a visibility to real-time patient location. It gave us an ability to automate our occupancy and discharges. Uh, we have a, alarms for patient walkouts, for staff assist, um, and to alert us for patients in isolated areas. Uh, we have interaction reporting between tagged entities, so the, between the staff um, and a patient, the patient and a piece of equipment, um, and it gives nursing access to all the assets and staff in the location, so we know where all of our uh, clinical devices are. 
So this is the hardware that we deployed from Sonator. We are using ultrasound and Wi-Fi. Um, we have the staff tags, we have patient tags, and we have asset tags. Um, and these are our sense-located transmitters um, that we have in the ceiling. Um, our implementation was a typical implementation. We went over an eight-week period of time. Um, it was a little longer, you know, the, the pre-kickoff meeting was a little longer, obviously, with uh, getting how much equipment we needed and all of that type stuff done. This is our implementation process. Uh, we had our kickoff meeting. There was a site survey. We spent a lot of time uh, with Sonator uh, discussing best places for the devices. We, what, uh, were we putting them in bathrooms? Are we putting them in locker rooms? Can they go in the stairwell? Um, anything that you would think of, where are our exit points? Every little detail was evaluated by um, the team. Um, what was nice during our installation period was that we did not have to work around patients and staff and closed units um, in order to do our installation. It was a, a big benefit that we were opening a brand new building um, which was not occupied yet. So we were able to do um, an install with cable um, and all of the hardware without impacting our patient care. We do have an existing uh, building where there were patients, so we did, which already had our Sonator um, hardware in that just needed upgrades to the devices. Um, so that took a little bit longer and a little bit more planning as far as getting all of that stuff uh, rolled out while we were, you know, with the least amount of impact to our patients. Um, our training, we also had the benefit of opening a brand new facility where there were requirements for education for all of the new facility. So we were able to also bring the staff in and have a captive audience as to what we were doing, why we were doing it, how we were doing it. Um, as part of that training, we talked about why the patients were going to get uh, RTLS tags, why the staff needed RTLS tags. They were already familiar with the asset tagging because we had asset tagging prior to that, but we talked about the enhancement and how more visible um, the assets would be to the staff. Um, some of our challenges around that were, as always, staff wanted to know, were we tracking them? What are we doing? How, how are we using this data? Um, and really our big selling point for all of this was safety and having them come into this big new environment where they couldn't even see from one end of the nursing unit to the other end of the nursing unit, I think was a really big selling point um, that they'd be able to find each other in case they actually really needed each other. So um, this is our view um, within the application that we integrated with the Sonator hardware. Um, with the application, we're able to see our patients in real time. We're able to know, are they walking down the hallway? Did they go down for their CAT scan? Um, we're also able to see patients in a room with a piece of equipment. Um, this was actually a huge satisfier for our physician staff, surprisingly. Um, they were very happy with knowing who the nurse was taking care of the patient, as well as where is my patient. So where they would spend time going into a patient room, not finding their patient, coming back outside and going, where's my patient, and trying to find the nurse who was taking care of the patient to understand where that patient went to, they were able to look up on our big display boards and be like, oh, my patient's in CAT scan, or oh, my patient's walking in the hallway, let me go find them. Um, so this was really a, a nice piece for all of them. Um, so one of our big things that we did and wanted to do with this to, was to automate our discharge process. Um, we were finding a lot of dead bed time and finding that there were some hidden beds as nursing likes to do. Um, they don't want to take another admission yet, so they'll forget to put in the discharge in the system and we may not know for a while that patients are gone. Meanwhile, other patients are sitting in the ED waiting for that bed to be clean, ready, um, so that they can occupy that bed. 
Um, so one of the things we did with the RTLS tagging was to automate this discharge process um, within the application. So by having our patients tagged, the process is set up that we, um, when the patient is ready for discharge, we cut off the RTLS tag as they're walking out the door and we drop them in this drop box. And that drop box is actually triggering that patient, that triggering that that patient has left the building, um, which then sends a notification to our housekeeping staff so that they know that that bed is dirty and that they can come up and clean that bed as well. Um, patients get their RTLS tags at admission. So as soon as they hit our door and they're getting admitted to an inpatient care unit, uh, they get an RTLS tag. Part of that, uh, once they get that tag and it's targeted to that physical location, once they're in that location, it confirms that that patient is automatically um, in the system. Um, so we know when a patient automatically made it to the room, so that that worked on of our admissions and discharge time um, and really gave us a lot more real-time data as far as how long did it take a patient to get out of the ED up to a unit, um, how long did it take a patient to go from floor to floor, unit to unit, um, and then we were experiencing also real-time discharge so that we knew that patient was out of that bed um, and was giving us better uh, length of stay times. Um, and this is what I was talking about a little bit before, a little, um, a little bigger version of what we're able to see with the, real, with the RTLS tags. Um, with our staff being tagged and our patients being tagged, um, it gives us better visibility for our patients when they were last seen, when they were last rounded on. It helps us with elopement, so if a patient hadn't been seen for so long or they're not in their room, we'll be able to know where they are. Um, this was actually improved our staff responsiveness time um, and our hourly rounding so that the patients really felt like they were being rounded on. It was almost a contest um, to see who would not have any red on the board. As soon as it turned to a, uh, an hour, the numbers would turn red and people were actually looking at them and going, oh, I didn't think it was that long before I see my patient but they realized it now in real time that they can go in and, and see what was going on with their patient. Um, this, is, this data is about our discharge efficiency. So what we found by using the RTLS tags to automate our discharges. Um, so these are our different units. So um, what we're showing here is how many discharges were done by RTLS how, much, how many were done through the application uh, by just clicking a button and how much were actually done through our ADT system. Um, so we were finding that the majority of our units were above 60% um, using RTLS as automated discharge. And that, that increased our efficiencies for our EVS staff to get up and actually clean the rooms, clean the beds, and get those patients out of the ED much quicker than they were before. And when you start looking at recapturing that lost bed times and what does that mean, um, it really is telling you how many more potential for patients that you can serve by getting that dead bed time back. Where we had beds that were open for an hour or two, we had patients that were dissatisfied because they were sitting down in the ED waiting for a bed. This really increased our visibility as far as when beds were open, when they were clean, um, and being able to get those patients back up. So not only was there potential for increasing our patient satisfaction through getting them out of the ED and into a bed on time, but it also um, allowed us to serve more patients and not have anyone really sitting around waiting in that ED. Um, so we really did see a good um, increase in how many bed days gained by the time we were um, by the time we started using this, um, and we were able to uh, potentially serve um, 143 more patients in last fiscal year. So far, 63 this year, um, and then overall 240 patients since we implemented. 
Um, and now I'm going to turn it over for Jill, to Jill for Jill's experience. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. Give me just one second and I'll pull up my screen. As Kelly mentioned, my name is Jill Wilson and I'm going to um, be talking to you a little bit today about Altru's journey with achieving transformation. Altru is a health system located in Grand Forks, North Dakota. We're a 250-bed facility, non-for-profit, located um, in a very rural area. So our challenges are unique and not unique for those of us across the country. Um, we are faced with a very low unemployment rate in our area. So with the nationwide nursing shortages, our low unemployment rate, and um, the value of reimbursement in healthcare declining, we really felt we needed to look to technology to help us solve some operational efficiency opportunities for us so we could continue to grow and change. So with that, um, I felt really strongly as a clinical leader that we needed to invest into different tools. Those tools being technology, I feel healthcare is kind of a data-starved um, field. We don't have real-time operational information. And without that real-time operational information, we aren't able to change as fast as we need to change to keep up with the demands of our patients and we don't allow for innovation. So without being able to give data and operational intelligence, um, I feel that we limit our innovation. So that is the foundation for why we chose to use an RTLS platform in our ambulatory clinics. So a little different than Kelly, our focus thus far with RTLS technology has been in our clinic settings. So today I wanted to talk a little bit on three key pieces. One is the RTLS system. So we use Sonator technologies to help us achieve our real-time operational data. And we use Zulufly software. We also use a business intelligent tool. We use a Microsoft BI tool. There's lots of tools out there to help us create a, a visualization that speaks to our leaders and our physicians about the initiatives that we're trying to accomplish. And then I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how, um, as leaders, we need to spend a lot of time growing our team because it's our team that helps us innovate um, so we can transform care. So first off, when we look at healthcare, 60% of our cost is labor. And one of the greatest areas of opportunity is waste um, in our staff, not knowing, um, having the information to make informed decisions. So for us, what that meant in the clinic is we didn't know how long our patients were waiting in between visits. We knew how many patients were coming into our clinic how long were they waiting? How long did it take for them to have x-rays? How long did it take for them to be with a nurse? How long were they actually with the providers? So how could we get information to our frontline teams to help them make better decisions? We found that unlike other organizations, the information that we had is very old. Um, very old meaning as an administrative leader, I get monthly reports. I get weekly reports. Um, some of my information comes to me daily, but when we launched our um, RTLS strategy, we found that that's old information because now we can have real-time information about the patients that are in our clinics, the efficiency of our physicians and staff. And with that understanding, we were able to look at how we needed to reallocate our resources um, to increase our utilization. We found that flowing of the data is now at the same rate or faster, so we're able to make real-time decisions that optimize our workflow. So just a little bit of the background. We, like Kelly, used the Sonator tags and um, ultrasound and Wi-Fi technology. 
So we now have this technology in our orthopedics clinic, in primary care, in ENT and neurology with an expansion plan to go across the rest of our organization by 2019. We have found that this technology is extremely reliable in providing us with the data and now really has become a staple for us to make operational decisions and where we would look to um, put time into process improvement. So as I mentioned, partnering with both Sonator and we currently use Zulufly. Zulufly is a software um, solution that helps us know the phases of care in which our patients are and our providers are in. So what you see on the screen is a dashboard that we have customized to um, number of exam rooms. The colors are coordinated to the providers that are in the room. We can see patient's name, how long they've been waiting. We set um, visualizations to help us understand if a patient has been waiting more than the designated time. Um, we can set alerts in our system. So right now, there's no more guessing. Um, we have digital screens on our off-stage areas that are accessible to everybody. Um, so with that visibility, then we can bring the the service to the patient. We also have automated the technology. What you'll see is one of our registration specialists is able to carry this software on an iPad and go into the rooms and schedule follow-up appointments for our patients, which has turned out to be a huge patient satisfier. What you're seeing now is the data visualizations I was talking about with our BI tool. Um, this is an ongoing work in progress. We've partnered um, with a company that assists us in pulling together what we want our dashboard to look like. Um, we currently are focusing on some of these key metrics that I'll talk about here in a little bit. Cycle time, we're looking at our on-time starts. We want to know the wait time for every patient. Um, we have identified different phases of care. So, um, device management, waiting between providers, waiting in the lobby, waiting with imaging, um, the time that they're spent with a provider, with a scheduler, or with staff. Um, and as you can see at the top, I can take as an administrator, I can look at all of the areas collectively, or I can highlight one area and get their individual information. This information is available to all of our teams that have RTLS in their clinic, so from frontline staff all the way to our physicians and our executive team can see the same information. So the ability to share real-time information really does help us on our path for innovation. So we now have real-time operational metrics that you just saw visualized through a BI tool, which really lends to now that operational efficiency and improvement, so mobilizing those ideas from our frontline providers, from our staff, from our physicians, from our nurses, from our therapists. Us being able to mobilize those ideas has driven some operational efficiency. With the RTLS system, we now know real time where our opportunities are. So what you're seeing here is just a snapshot of the wait time prior to the first encounter. And it's very easy to see where our outliers are. Um, so real time, our nursing supervisor is able to go in after that patient and quickly talk to the staff. They can talk to the provider, ask what barriers they're encountering, um, is it process? Is it staffing? Um, and we can start to identify some trends. So as you can see from about 20, towards the right side of the graph, we had a whole bunch of outliers. Um, so is it time of day that we didn't have enough resources? Did we have a lot of add-ons during that time of day? But with this visualization, we can ask those questions real time and we're able to make changes. And our staff have become very engaged in the process because we too, like Kelly, spent a lot of time 
um, making sure that they understood our goal for RTLS was to improve our patient experience. And it was also to allow us to allocate the appropriate resources needed to take care of our patients. So they became very involved in our care process. So we have a visibility board. Some of you have may have seen visibility boards like this. So what we do is every day we huddle around this board and we use the information that we have from our RTLS system to help drive the conversations around our huddle board as it relates to the strategy of the organization. So we talk about our departmental metrics, we talk about where we're trending as far as our cycle time, and then we also talk about projects. So which projects should we put in place in our specific clinic that would impact um, the experience of the patient, that would improve our efficiency? And we've come up with some really um, kind of fun, unique stories. So when we look at, from a quality perspective, we, we always had a backlog in our orthopedics clinic um, with our providers starting late. And they always felt it was related to our radiology team taking too long um, to complete the x-rays. Well, with our RTLS system, um, we decided to do a pilot and we implemented a scheduled visit time for x-rays. So you would come in 15 minutes and have your x-ray scheduled 15 minutes prior to your physician visit. And that was an idea from the staff that they thought we should try. So we tried that, but with our real-time data, we could see that actually we were making the patients wait longer by scheduling them a 15-minute appointment because an x-ray on average took three to seven minutes. So we were adding more non-value time to our patient's experience. So we quickly changed that. We made some process improvements, and we moved on. Um, we also were able to use projects uh, related to quality in our departments. Um, it's a very active process. Our physicians join our huddle boards, our registration specialists, our contact center, um, myself as executive leadership are at the huddle boards to talk about real time what went well yesterday, what's going well today, and what do we need to change to continue to stay on track to meet our demands of our patients. Um, we have been live with RTLS in our orthopedics department going on three years now, and we've learned a lot and are challenging our own ways of thinking. Initially, we um, started off with cycle time. We wanted to understand how long somebody was in our orthopedics clinic. And our team, we found out that it was, you know, well over an hour, um, upwards of about 90 minutes sometimes for patients to cycle through an orthopedic clinic. When you were putting the patient at the center, we realized that nobody, none of us, want to spend that much time in a physician's office. So what could we do to um, reduce our cycle time? So for the first year, cycle time was a key metric for us, and we spent a lot of time looking at removing waste, um, how could we make that patient experience better? How could we be leaner um, and more efficient? So cycle time was our huge um, opportunity for that first year. But now, um, since in orthopedics, we have our cycle time, and I'll share that data with you in a little bit, we have our cycle time in a really good position. We wanted to look at different measures that could create different conversations and awareness on how we could benefit our patients. So we now look at patient value added time, and value added time really is the amount of time that the patient is with a care provider. So that care provider could be the physician, it could be a nurse, it could be an x-ray tech, but they're face-to-face -face with a care provider. We still look at cycle time, so the time that they walk into our clinic to the time they leave our clinic, we look at provider value at a time. So um, we look at the amount of time that our providers spend with a patient 
and we're able to trend that out so then we can make sure that their visit types in their schedule match the amount of time that they typically spend with a patient. So then we can make sure that we have on-time starts. So we want to make sure that we're seeing our patients when they're scheduled to be seen and they're not waiting for us. We also track patient wait times so we can see where the bottleneck of services are, whether it's um, does our population tend to come in well before their scheduled appointment? Are they waiting for a provider? Are they waiting for therapy? What phase of care is our greatest opportunities? And then we really are focusing now on the duration of time in each, um, we call them phase of care or steps in the care process. So as I said, um, now that we have launched this technology through other clinics, we as an organization can start to see that on average, it takes our nursing staff 4.8 minutes to room a patient. And we can start to identify if there's an outlier in a clinic, why does the cardiology clinic take more resources to room a patient than the orthopedics clinic, or why is that different for primary care? And again, really coming at it from an understanding perspective, not that one's right or wrong, but how do we um, look at the processes to standardize as much as we can and remove as much waste as we can to see the volume of patients um, that we have demand for. So as you can see, a lot of our metrics are continuing to grow and the conversations are continuing to change. This is uh, the dashboard that we show our teams on a day-to-day -day basis. And what you see on the left-hand side is the waiting state. So where are our patients waiting and for how long? So you can see in this particular clinic, on average, they're waiting 7.6 minutes for a provider. They wait on average three minutes for an injection, 1.7 minutes for a scheduler, 1.5 minutes for the nurse, and point not even a minute before radiology comes. So when you look at where we could look at process improvement, we would say that waiting for that provider is an area of opportunity that we can focus on in this particular clinic. Um, we also look at our room utilization. So we know that facilities are very expensive capital and we want our rooms as productive as they can be. So, in this particular example, we see that obviously patients spend a fair amount of time when they're in infusion. Um, they spend on average 24 minutes with imaging, 21 minutes for a CT scan. In this clinic, they spend 14 minutes with a provider and so on and so forth. So the value of this is really trying to understand the capacity of our team. So when we share this information with a physician, and for example, um, on average, you would see a physician's visit type for a cold and a cough to be a 15-minute visit. Well, we can, we can drill down with this real-time technology to say that a physician for a cold and cough diagnosis is not going to need 14.26 minutes for, for that visit. They probably only need four and a half minutes. So then that helps us build the schedule so our flow for our patients and for our providers go very smoothly throughout the day. So again, just a way that we have taken the RTLS data and put it into a BI tool that really tells a story to continue to engage our team and change the culture. So it's a culture of um, technology, it's a culture of innovation, it's a culture of operational improvement. I'd like to take just a few minutes to share some of our, our huge successes, um, and I'm going to focus on our orthopedics department because that's where we've been live the longest with our RTLS. So as I shared with you, um, when we started in our orthopedics clinic, we used a stopwatch to try to see how long our patients were waiting, and, and we were upwards of, um, I know I said 90 minutes before, but we were at 76 minutes um, prior. When we launched the RTLS technology, the first reports we got were 61 minutes. And again, our providers 
did not want a patient on average to be in their clinic more than an hour. They really felt that that is not a good patient experience and it's not a good use of patient time. So that initial um, discussion we talked about for that first year, really focusing on cycle time and looking at ways to improve our cycle time, we were able to get our cycle time in our orthopedics clinic from 61 minutes to 45 minutes. Um, on average for a patient, which is very remarkable when you, and that's still where we are today, right around that 45 minutes, sometimes 45 to 47 minutes. That's remarkable because when you think of that's one extra appointment um, per hour that we were able to add on to increase the capacity in our orthopedics clinic. And that was all done because we had real-time data. We could ask real-time questions. We could make real-time decisions about the care resources that were required to take care of those patients. A um, couple other key things that I would like to talk about in addition to reducing the cycle time by 25%, um, we converted over 4,500 minutes each week of non-value added time, so again, that time of those patients waiting, to value added time, which is time spent with a provider, which really significantly impacted our CG CAP scores. So in an ambulatory setting, that is our, um, in essence, our patient satisfaction scores, and they're publicly reported, so it's very important for us to have a, a high value added time. We added 1,700 more patient visits to our clinic. The remarkable thing about this is during this um, time period of the data, we added 1,700 more visits and we lost two physicians. So the capacity that we added through the use of RTLS and process improvement was remarkable to be able to continue to grow our book of business even though we had provider turnover. Because of those visits, we generated 92 additional surgery cases. Um, it's never a goal of ours to reduce positions in our organization, but we do have the obligation to be fiscally responsible. So what we did see is through um, operational improvements, we reduced 2,264 nursing hours. Those nurses didn't lose their positions in our organization. Like I said earlier, we are in a nationwide nursing shortage. But the great news was we were able to reallocate those resources to other service lines that were short on nursing services. So through that reallocation, through that information, using data consistently, we were able to shift resources to the other part of our organization that um, didn't that were in need. And at the end of the day, we saw a 24% increase in our annual net revenue, which is extremely um, beneficial to our organization. I'd like to leave you with just a couple of thoughts. Um, I feel that as a leader, um, we need to step out and invest in this technology. I'm very passionate about the RTLS technology because it provided not only myself, but my frontline staff and my physicians with information. And it's that information that has really helped us change our culture. We are now becoming a culture that thrives on data, that welcomes data. Because of the accuracy, we aren't challenging the data, we're accepting that data. Um, with our visualization, it tells a story that impacts our, our patients. And ultimately, um, it engages our teams in order to redesign the care model. And the care model we have today will continue to be redesigned in years to come. And we found that really there's a capacity and a desire to understand data and know data. So that really grows your team. So I um, encourage everybody to really be a leader, be innovative and step out and invest in technology. For us, transformation is intentional, and I think it's important um, that we view it that way. We are engaging our teams with the data. We want them to understand what's happening 
in their area of care and how that impacts our patients. Um, the new technology is showing our patients that they like the information. Um, our patients are very interested in their cycle time. The ones that come back to the clinic often, they, they look to know how long a nurse is with them. Um, so that's been kind of been a side benefit to have our patients engaged in this process. But on the clinic side, it helps us understand our barriers and provide better care. Like I said earlier, you saw several renditions of what our BI looks like, and we are constantly challenging that visualization piece. Um, I feel that data needs to tell a story, and visualization is very important in telling that story and helping people understand um, where we need to go in that particular clinic. We did require some outside resources to help us with that, um, but few were in a really good place. Transformation only happens when we allow teams um, to generate ideas, and then we bring them into our patient care, and I really feel that the RTLS technology has allowed our, a voice to our staff and for that, we are creating a better patient experience, not only um, for the patients, but for us and for our community as we're the sole community provider in, North, in Grand Forks, North Dakota. With that, we'd like to thank you for your time and Kelly and I would welcome any questions. Thank you so much, Jill and Kelly. Yes, we have got quite a few questions that we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, the first question is, what hospital staff receive tags, sorry, receive tags first during initial deployment? Were there any objections? And if so, how did you overcome them? Kelly, do you I want to go speak. first? Yeah, I can speak to that. Um, we had talked up um, RTLS tagging a l for a long time. It was out there, we talked about it um, with integration, with all the great things that it can do, and so we kind of sold it for a really long time. Um, right now we have it integrated with our teletracking system for everything that we showed you for visibility. We have it, um, we have a staff duress set up so that if the, page, if the staff are alone in a room, they push a button because they're not feeling safe. It goes to security. Um, and we also have it integrated with our call bell system so that when they walk into a patient room, it actually shuts off the call bell or the bed exit alarm. Um, and then we have another system that we're working with integrating where um, it'll pop up a picture and say, you know, Kelly's your nurse today. She just entered the room. Um, so they were they were excited about it. We have a lot of millennials, so they're they're you know catching on to all the technology. Um, those people that were hesitant to use it and oh you're tracking me all the time, um, we really we really sold the safety piece and really had them focus on you know, if you're not, if you're doing your job, I'm not looking at anything. Like I'm not looking to see that you went to the bathroom. So needless to say, we did not put um, monitors in the bathrooms or break rooms. Um, so that was one thing that they, they said, oh, okay, well I can go to the bathroom. You're not gonna know I'm in there. Like, no. Um, and really saying like, if you're doing your job and you're going to see your patients and you are where you're supposed to be, then there's no issues. But I think the safety thing really sold it for them. For us, we, like Kelly, um, we had staff ask that same question. We did put an HR policy into place that um, our RTL system would not be used for any um, behavioral or punitive um, tracking purposes for employees. We did not put sensors in our break room or our bathrooms either. We, um, Our staff was very open. I would have to say that our physicians, we had a couple physicians who um, were reluctant to wear their badge originally, um, but what we found was they didn't have the data and their data wasn't accurate. So as we were having data conversations and we were able to allocate resources timely, they um, were not. So that only lasted probably about three weeks and then everybody 
wears their badges. Um, and administration wears a badge too. So, and managers and supervisors. So we're all visible. Right, that sounds great. Um, another question is, how have hospital staff adjusted to having RTLS? Do they see the benefits? For us in the clinic, absolutely. They love to be able to know where the patients are, how long they've waited. Um, we use the technology as a push button system, as a communication system. So in the room, we have additional tags that would flag for radiology or scheduling our room turnover. So as a communication tool, it's extremely valuable. Same thing for us. Um, in the huge footprint that we have, our staff are loving the fact that they can just log in and go, I need an IV pump, and actually go find their IV pump. Um, it's been very helpful with, um, if you could see our floor plan, you would understand a little better, but it's, it's pretty big. So then when there's nobody in a pod and you can't find a nurse, um, it's really helpful to be able to go, oh, they're in that room based off of what they're saying for RTLS. So I think they've definitely seen the benefit for it. And I know that they're paying attention to it because I do get calls when a patient comes up with no badge on um, and their batteries are running low and the board's not updating. Um, so they're really on top of it and engaged. Okay, that actually brings me to one other question that's coming. How long do the tag batteries actually last? I have to tell you, I don't honestly know the answer to that question. Uh, we're finding that it depends on usage. Um, some of our asset tags, we haven't had to change the batteries at all, but those that are moving constantly, quickly, constantly updating, um, those lasted a little over a year. Um, and I would have to say our staff badge is probably about two at this point, a year and a half, two. Okay, that's great, thanks. So what platforms did you evaluate and how did each address issues like floor hopping, dead spot, and sound wave interference? Kelly, do you wanna lead with that? I think it's hospital-based more than clinic. Not sure if Kelly's having problems with her audio anymore. Uh, Sorry, I was I was talking, but you can hear me. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> we I, I wasn't involved in the process of all of that, but uh, we had a relationship with Sanator already, so it was an easy pick for us. We had a good relationship. We liked what they were doing with the hardware we had. Um, so the new improved hardware was you know an easy sell. Okay, so what was the most impactful aspect of having RTLS in the beginning, and what about now? For, for the clinic was the data that we saw immediately. Um, for us to make changes, our physicians need data, need evidence. Um, it brings uh, truth. To, to what we're asking for. So initially, it was, the data was extremely important. Now, I would say um, it really is the ability to communicate and for the flow of the patients. I think for us, it hasn't really changed. It's really just been about the transparency from the beginning and even now. Okay, so are there things you would do differently when deploying RTLS in another facility or key learnings? I think the key thing is really just to make sure that the whole team is on board and the whole team knows what's going on at all times. Um, we struggle sometimes where the clinical side of things isn't kept up on the IT side of things. so. IT will bring things to us and we're like, but we, that's really not going to work with the workflow. 
Um, so just making sure all your teams are there for the whole process. I think for us, we didn't have enough dedicated IT resource. So as this continues to grow in our organization, making sure that there's um, resources allocated for maintenance, like you talked about the battery tags. So that was a key learning for us. Um, was probably the primary one. I think we paced our our go lives well. Um, we too did a lot of education, and um, every go live goes faster now um, because our organization understands what RTLS is. Like I said, we did a pilot in orthopedics, so it was kind of a closed area to begin with. But um, dedicating resources to this technology is is very important. Okay, so since deploying and getting data from using RTLS, what are the top three things you've learned? Have you implemented workflow changes because of the information? We have learned that wait time in our clinics was rampant. Um, and we always wondered, anecdotally, you would hear that. So we validated that. and so. I think the changes we've made are so numerous. We've changed visit types, we've changed physician templates, we've changed care flow processes of when somebody goes to the lab or radiology. Um, we've changed nursing staffing models to accommodate the efficiencies. So it's an ongoing process improvement with the technology. Um, for us, just focusing on our discharge, um, really our discharge workflow, um, we were finding that the staff were afraid to lose the tags, so they were cutting them off and leaving them in rooms. So we've had to work on that workflow that it needs to happen in real time. Um, otherwise, it was defeating the whole purpose of them using the tags. And I think for us, it's just rolling out more things. So we're we're good on the visibility piece and discharge is improving. Um, the next thing we want to start working on is um, our elopement alarms and the patient safety aspect of it. Okay. So, so what is the key impact on ROI from your perspective of using RTLS in your facility? For us, the key impact is the volume of patients that we're able to see in our clinics, so that increased capacity. And then for our surgical areas, that increased capacity is turned into increased surgical volume. And for us, I think it's the wasted time. Um, we spent a lot of time looking for assets, walking around floors, trying to find things, so it really improves that workflow and efficiency with the nurses to have um, their clinical pieces of equipment for the care that they need to give to the patient. Okay, that's great. We've got time for about one more question, um, which has been asked by a few people. What department is responsible for the maintenance of the RTLS system? Our IT department is responsible for that. So we have a combination. Our IT IT is um, responsible for the infrastructure of it all, but it really is nursing and EVS for the maintenance. Uh, it's nursing, EVS, and clinical engineering for the maintenance of the tags, the changing of the batteries, the making sure equipment's tagged, the cleaning of the tags in between usage. Great. We're now coming up to uh, our hour. Um, any questions we have not had time to ask, um, I will be emailing over to Kelly and Jill, so they will answer them, so please be patient. So I just want to thank you again, Kelly and Jill, for a great and informative webinar, and thank you again to today's sponsor, Sonitor. One lucky attendee will win an Amazon gift card for completing the post-webinar survey, which will appear on your screen shortly. You must complete the survey to obtain your certificate of attendance. For more information about our upcoming webinars, please visit our website, webinarwednesday.live. 
thanks once again for joining us this afternoon. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and we hope to see you again next week.